All right, it's 201, so we can officially get started. Welcome and thank you everybody for joining today's webinar. This is the third of the summer webinar series presented by the Transportation Research Board Subcommittee on Route Choice and Spatiotemporal Behavior. Today's topic is a variational auto encoder approach for route choice set generation presented by Professor Shlomo Becker from the Israel Institute of Technology. And as always, we are joined today um, also by the subcommittee members, Professor Natalia Barber from the University of Central Florida, Professor Roger Chen of the University at, of Hawaii at Manoa, and NYU's Professor Joseph Chow. We will be recording this session and then uploading it to the C2Smart YouTube channel later today. And we'd like to encourage everybody to ask questions and you can do so by using the Q&A button at the bottom of the Zoom window. And then we will read out your questions at the end of the presentation. And with that, I will hand things over to Professor Chen to get us started. All right, thank you, Lizzie. So as she, as she mentioned, um, good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to our final uh, webinar of our summer webinar series. Um, and as she mentioned, this is sponsored by um, AAP40, which is our, the Networks Modeling Committee of TRB, and then AAP30, which is the Traveler Behavior and Values Committee. And I hope, uh, given that this is a TRB event, hopefully everyone had a very good August 1st. Um, we are um, fortunate to be joined today by Professor Bacor, uh, who is a professor in the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department at the Technion, and he's been faculty dean, dean since 2019. Um, he conducts research in transportation planning and network equilibrium models and has a special interest in route choice modeling, uh, which is no surprise to us. Uh, today, he's talking about the variational autoencoder approach to route choice set generation, which is a very, uh, I won't say famous, but it's a very common problem for people who do route choice modeling with discrete choice um, approaches. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Professor Bicor to give us his uh, talk. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Roger. Thank you, thank you, thank you for inviting me to this seminar. Uh, I, let me let me start by mentioning that I have the opportunity to to see the previous seminar by, given by Moise uh, Fogerau. I hope to provide you additional insights on the root choice modeling in these approaches. By uh, a quite, a, I, I hope it is interesting to to the audience here. Before I start, I would like to acknowledge Dr. Ru Yao, who has completed his PhD last year at the Technion, and currently he's a postdoc at the TU. And he's also working a bit with Moins Fogero. So, you know, a small closure now. Our talk today is about applying a machine learning model. It's a variation autoencoder for root choice set generation. The method shown here is expected to be general for other applications, but uh, we are going to focus on the root choice also because of my personal interest, but also because of the complexity of the problem, as, as I guess you know, it, it attracts several uh, research on this topic. This research, specific research, was already published in Transportation Research Part B last year, and it was already and also presented, it was a poster presentation this January at TRB. Uh, so I'm going, I hope I can provide additional insights, hope, hope to also to answer uh, the simple questions. The difficult ones I'm going to pass to Rui, some, sometime he can answer it later. Uh, so the outline of this presentation, uh, briefly present, we introduce root choice set generation problem, uh, different methods for tackling this problem uh, and remaining challenges that still are outstanding for to solve this problem. We are going to show you some derivations of the variational autoencoder. Basically the point here, I want to uh, convey the message or the point, how this can be applied in root choice sets. And uh, we are going to show this in a toy network and also in a real case study. And uh, we are going to show you some estimation results. So I guess you have seen already this in previous presentations. This is, uh, there's several papers talk, talking about the famous case that if you want to generate the choice set for an OD pair in a dense network, as you have nowadays in several urban areas, it is still today, still with a lot of you know, computer power, is still a challenging process. And, and if you think about the classical root choice modeling, which is a two-step procedure. So first step, we need to generate the choice set. Second step, we calculate the probability of choosing an alternative for this given set. Still, you have this first step as a challenging problem. Uh, 
we again just 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 to give for a, um, as a matter of introduction i can show you this example suppose i going to i want to go from here from this left hand to the right hand the point uh, you see here a very dense network and the problem is how can you we as modelers to create a choice set if you want to estimate the model parameters the naive approach of course is to enumerate all, all the possible alternatives but of course in this uh, famous example you can see from the green color the links you have a multitude you know not infinite but very very large number of alternatives this is of course not practical for real size problems even with today's computer power uh, this enumeration and of course if you think that not only you have the big network but you have also a large size of a uh, root choice then it becomes the, the problem becomes even more complex so still what are these challenges that i'm going to see the, the problem stems from the fact in specifically in root choice but not only in several transportation problems you have the problem to find the correct or the considered choice set by the individuals this is still a challenge today and in most in many cases also in root choice it is not possible to observe them so the idea here is that we could construct a choice set that is considered if you think for example in this example here that i that i draw from google maps from the tel aviv to the airport for example as i wish i could tell it to you now but uh, it's just for the for the sake of the example uh, the Google map gives me three different routes. And as you can see, the, uh, uh, hypothetically, there are infinite number of routes, but certainly several of them, the probability of choosing is zero. And so, so the point I'm, I'm going to make in the next slide is that it is not possible to use the full set, not only because it's computationally intractable, but also from a behavioral standpoint. And then, just just to recapitulate very you know uh, classical uh, you have you can broadly uh, ca classify or divide root choice methods generation methods in deterministic methods stochastic methods and so on the deterministic methods of course we could enumerate if the network is not large we could enumerate but in most cases that i see in the past 20 years uh, we use a subset of variant if you want of shortest path methods a link penalty, link elimination, branch and bound, you name it. Some of them I myself have worked in the past when I was a, 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 a student. Uh, but, uh, but right now we have um, a more advanced choice models that you have, as you, as you have heard already in the previous presentation. Uh, for example, you have several uh, stochastic methods. Uh, they started from the idea of the random walk methods because random walk is a is a is a simple um, uh, root choice that you can calculate the probability the sampling of the random walk because of the closed form case. However, random walk, as you know, is not very much behavior really because at each point I can go right, left, uh, and uh, and through. So you know it's not a little bit behaviorally uh, oriented. We of course. Uh, can, uh, know our are aware of in extended methods for implicit root choice modeling, such as uh, methods from Fogera, from my, from um, uh, uh, from students of uh, um, Emma Fraginger, and so on. These stochastic methods could avoid inconsistency in parameters estimated. This is the strong point of these methods. That us, by, by assuming that the individuals consider the pool choice. And this is the point I want to make here. The full choice set, in my humble opinion, is behaviorally questionable. As you have seen, in, for example, in the previous slides, some alternatives has actually probability of zero to be considered. So to consider the full choice set, it is good from a computational perspective, and it's good for implicit methods. But my, my question is as a behavioral, if it is corrected from a behavioral standpoint. So then starts the idea that we discussed and it came up with this idea. It starts from a very simple observation. The chosen alternatives must belong to the true consideration set. It's a very simple and naive phrase, but it, 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 it hides you some nice ideas that you can use. For example, if you have enough observations, we could 
try to define some kind of, uh, or, or, or infer if you want, the attributes that describe this observation. So the idea, if you have enough observations, how can you use this information to infer the consideration, the true considered choice set, which I don't know. For sure. So that is the point that I want to make. I'm going to try to convince you, to, 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 to say to you that the idea stems from a very simple fact. Now comes the mathematical that you need to develop in order to use this simple idea. So some of these mathematics are already being discussed in the children for many years in terms of the sampling. You have papers from Guevara and Ben Akiva and so on. So I'm not, I'm, in this point, I'm not going to be new. I'm going to be using or adapting these ideas in the VAE that is a machine learning model. So let's start just to, again, recapitulate. From the probabilistic point of view, you assume that each alternative or out of the full choice set that I don't know, has some likelihood to be included. We would like to know this true distribution in a hypothetical case. We want to know this distribution, but we don't, but, but we might be able to construct. If you knew, we could construct this. However, this true distribution, like I mentioned right now, it is not known. So that is the problem here. So now, now comes the deal. We have some samples of distribution from the chosen alternative, from the real route that I chose. So if I can use this idea, I can transform the problem to a maximum likelihood estimation for this distribution. So the idea is to use some parametric, I'm going to use some parameterize this maximum likelihood that I don't know. Let's assume that, let's call this for the sake of this uh, uh, presentation, Q theta. So before I continue with this mathematical approach, let's compare this to the random walk, okay? The source of the stochasticity is different. In the random walk cases, the sampling probability is from the modeler's point of view. The implicit availability that I mentioned now is from the decision maker point of view, from the person, from the individual. Second point, the probability function. Again, random walk is defined by the modeler. And then comes what I mentioned here. The VA, I'm going to infer this distribution from the data itself. So I'm, I'm not going to a priori say that there is some intrinsic distribution because I don't know. So now, how do how do models? So we use Bayes theory. I guess all of you know this. So you have some Q theta that can be complex, as I mentioned now. So given the likelihood maximization problem, how do you specify this distribution? The idea to do so, we are going to reduce what is a Latin variable is a kind of a reduction like you have in factor analysis and other statistical methods that you are going to use some a, a joint probability of J, J is an alternative. And Z is this Latin space that I'm going to talk to you in a moment as a product of simple distribution. So I have now the log likelihood function that I, you can see in the paper, the manipulations. I want to calculate this expectation. What is the problem here? I need to know the posterior distribution, what is called the P of the Latin space Z for a given alternative, P Z given J. You have some prior distribution of the Latin. And what I want to find out, the posterior, the Q of J for a given Latin space. For those that are acquainted with this, uh, with this uh, approach, it is not new. It is similar to the random constraints of Swate and Ben Akiva 1987. So I'm going back to basics here, okay? Again, Bayes theorem, I guess everybody knows. So if I want to find out P for Z given J, you have the formula as you know. So the problem here is that this posterior here, P Z given J might not be tractable. So we need to approximate this posterior with a parametric distribution. That's the whole point. So now, now comes the deal. How do we model this Q and this P? If you know this, you can calculate, put in the likelihood, estimate a model. So again, I'm sampling here, but I don't know how to sample. So how do you do this? Let me, let's, let's open a parenthesis. And that's what we did. We look for, and we are luckily find this, uh, very variational autoencoder approach. It was not developed for choice, not for choice modeling, for this basically for image processing and so on. 
you see here the uh, in the slide the the reference to the to the uh, paper it is uh, developed by Kingma and Welling some years ago what this this model does this is a machine learning model this machine learning learns stochastic mappings between an observed space x space whose empirical distribution has some some distribution it is complicated like in our case in root choice, that's the point I'm going to make. And he uses a latent that I can mention now, Z space. This latent is going to be simpler, simpler to model. In this specific figure, whether this figure comes from the paper, is a sphere, it doesn't matter. It's a, we know this, okay? This generative model learns a joint distribution P, X, and Z that is factorized as the multiplication with a prior distribution of in the Latin space. And the stochastic decoder P probability of X given the Latin space Z. The stochastic encoder approximates the true but intractable posterior. So the whole point here is that the model, you need to use some idea that you are going to reduce the dimension of the model and go back, try to reproduce the, the, the variables back. And by going back to calculate this probability, this is what we need in the root choice case. This model is already being applied in several deep generative models for images, sound, and figures. You can find the details in the Archie paper. This figure is already an adaptation for our case. So how are we going to do to model this Q and P that I mentioned some minutes ago? Use this neural network model. It's a neural network model. So we are going to start from the sample in terms of the observed J, J are the alternative that what I see, what I observed. The X's that you see here that are the attributes of this value, well, root time, root length, and so on, okay? I go this inside this encoder that calculates the probability, gives the latent representation. So it's a reduction of the variables. And this latent goes in a posterior case to this decoder. So the inference process is represented to the encoder, decoder, and this decoder gives me the likelihood calculate for formula that I need. Uh, it is true, this method I cannot exactly calculate, has to, be, has to be said here, but I can estimate using, for example, Jensen's inequality, why I need this inequality, because the lan of this, I need to get rid of the lan. So the idea here is to, this inequality, you, you see the basic point here is it substitutes the land of the expectation by expectation of the land. So this is a trick well known in statistics. So basically what I'm going to do, the VAE is going to give me this distribution here. So this distribution, I can draw samples. I draw every time a, a Latin space Z from a given prior. And from this given prior, I can calculate this probability and the probability gives me the log likelihood function. So let me just summarize again all the details you have in the paper. So the input of the output of the VAE models are the attribute values of the alternatives. So this is the trick. I'm going to use the attribute, I mean the if you want explanatory values, very simple. For simplicity of the estimation process, we assume that all distributions are continuous. Here comes a caveat. You need to be careful here. And this comes the fact that this VAE model is a data mining, is a machine learning model, uses a lot of data. So what, what, I, what I'm trying to say is that if I want to uh, assume that the distributions are continuous, I need to have a lot of observations in order to approximate the distribution. If I have just a few hundreds of observations, it's going to be a little bit tricky to find the distribution. But if I have thousands or tens of thousands of observations, which is nowadays is not a big deal. I can find a nice approximation, and I'm going to show you this example. What I what we did here in the, using the Tel Aviv data. Uh, how do you combine all of this in the root choice modeling phase? So again, we combine machine learning and root choice by, as in any machine learning method, the first step, of course, you need to process the data as in the root choice. Uh, However, in this specific case, we need to normalize the variables in order to be more tractable, to find out better tuning for hyperparameter values 
in the VAE model, in any other machine learning model, it is a good practice to normalize the variables, as opposed to several root choice models that use absolute values, for example, travel time, uh, length, and so on. So use normalized travel time. So this is, we have been used this already two, three years ago with very good results. In several, in, we have a, a paper in part C that uh, started using this idea. And if are following this idea, I'm going to show you some examples later, how to use these normalized values. We are getting very good uh, estimation results. Uh, the, this is, so this is the first step is the data processing. Then uh, the next step is the, you know, the cumbersome step, if you want, to find out the probabilities, if you want, the variation out encoder, which is a choice set generation. Again, this is not an explicit method. I do not generate a priori the alternatives. Like I mentioned to you, I find, I find, I find the attributes of every, of every alternatives and enter in this encoder decoder method. Or clearly, I need to do a lot of assumptions here of the variables. For example, why use truncated normal as in several approximations, for example, travel time cannot be negative, so I need to use uh, approximations like this. The other two uh, posteriors can be approximated by normal distributions. And if you use, and this we need to uh, tune the hyperparameters, and I'm going to discuss this later, but basically after specifying the distributions, the neural network encoder will learn the mean and variances of the posterior, and the decoder will learn the mean of the likelihood. And the variances, I'm going to play this as a hyperparameter in the model. So again, this is the way that we adapt the general purpose machine learning VLE method to the root choice case. Uh, in order to be more, I hope it's going to be a little bit more clear, I'm going to show you what, what I'm talking now in a toy network example. This toy network is also in the paper, but I'm going to spend some minutes. I hope it's going to help you. So the point here that I'm using the toy network, am I going to use true values? Suppose that I know the utility function. I know everything. So I'm going to do reverse engineering here. I'm going to simulate, like you have in several papers, I'm going to simulate synthetic observations. And I'm going to try to replicate the true parameter values using VAE, sorry. So in this, uh, in this example, simple example, we have this network, one OD pair between node one and node eight. You can see here, you just very simple network. And you see here uh, in this toy network, we, enum we can clearly enumerate all the simple pass rules, simple pass. Simple pass means there is no, you do not traverse a link twice, okay? Simple pass, so you have here eight, uh, or to be exact, seven roots. Uh, and you can see they are purposely, the values we put purposely that we have a high, vari relatively high variability on the travel times and the travel lengths. The values in the, in the network, the parentheses are the lengths, I guess, and the numbers are the times. So four, three, four, so we have 11. The first root, one, six, seven, eight. You see here is, uh, the time is 11 and the length is 12 and so on, units. It doesn't matter here the units, but what, what is interesting here to see is that we are going to uh, estimate, not all the roots are in the true data set. This point is important. We are going to find out, theoretically, there are very circuitous root here. One, six, seven, four, two, three, five, eight, a lot of circuit here. And theoretically, this is not a you know, reasonable route for sure in terms of the travel time. So the way is how can we theoretically have some probability to generate this route? True. And this comes in the next case that I'm going to show you here. So if you have the median and the length and you use this truncated normal that I mentioned to you, you have this for sure. The, if I replicate, do random sampling here 100 times, for example, I generate five alternatives for each of the 1,000 observations for a random case. So I have 98% of these cases. Of course, the root length and root time are going to be relatively short because of the, of the values in the network. Okay? However, 
Know that 98% has less than 16 grains. It means that 50% of the generative alternatives reproduce the chosen alternative. However, this also indicates that the VAE model could generate diverse alternatives, although with low probability. True. But we need to have this spectrum. What I'm trying to say, the point that I want to make is that you need to have a lot of observations in order to capture also these so-called less attractive values. That's the point I want to make here. So in the, continuing this example, we estimate in total 100 models, mean every time I draw a sample, estimate the model and calculate the, 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 the average values here. The table that, that, uh, that we see here shows, starts from the true value, the mean that we found after these 100 replications, it is relatively close to the true value, 0 0.0883 and 0 0.5675 in absolute values. Uh, they are, of course, significantly different from zero and not significantly different from the predefined true values. So the count suggests that empirically, we could recover the true values for most parameters in around 84% of replication runs on average. What I'm trying to say is that since this is a distribution, and this, if I want to estimate the parameters, I need to draw that random sampling. What I'm trying to say to you is that in order to get more consistent estimates, I need to perform also a lot of replications of the VAE. So we have the VAE itself, and I, I run the VAE, which itself has the a validation process that has these internal uh, iterations. And what I'm trying to say, I have this, if you think about this outside iterations to calculate or to, to have better precision of the estimates of the betas. That's what I want to get in the eventually. I'm going to show you later the uh, run times for real networks. Okay. Uh, if I understand, I, I can and I go until the end, and then you can go for questions. Yes, I guess it's better this way. Okay. So, so I hope I have explained in a nutshell how the VAE, VAE works in a toy network, and I, I want now to show how we apply the VAE methods in a full. A case study. In this case, we use this Tel Aviv uh, household travel survey. It has been used in several papers already. Uh, it is a, a, a GPS assisted with an app based uh, that is being similar to several surveys that is being conducted down in the US, I guess, and other places in the world. So uh, uh, there's a paper in TRB in 2018 that describes in detail this, this survey and also the data set that was collected. For the sake of this presentation, what matters is that we have a lot of individuals, a lot of trips and so on. The GPS records, they are quite precise. We have two second step, time step on average. So we have, a, a, we have the GPS information. Of course, the IDs were scrambled. So you don't have the personal data uh, together with the household data, but we have the GPS points. The car, we use the car trips with OD pairs uh, at least two kilometers. Why? To avoid very short trips, I guess is less interesting for root choice estimation. And uh, there is another point that we use, we are focused on individuals' main activities. So out of this uh, huge amount of trips, we still have quite a lot, 5,000 that we could map match uh, to, the, to the network. So we can use this later for comparison with uh, conventional models, for example. For the VAE model, we use 80%, 20% partition, 4,000 for testing, 1,000 for, 4,000, sorry, for training, and 1,000 for testing. So uh, I want to, I want to uh, emphasize again a little bit about this normalized, which we found quite essential, quite crucial for the estimation process. Uh, uh, we need to be a little bit more careful here. For example, the, in this specific paper, you use these five uh, normalized root attributes, what you call length detour or time detour, city node percentage. Uh, what is the city node percentage? It's very simple. You take the, the network, the nodes in the network, and, ex and calculate the percentage of the route that passes inside nodes inside the city center. 
because as you get, as you may guess, in the city center, the network is more dense. You have more points. Okay, so intersections always in root choice gives a measure or a, of the, if you want, of the friction in terms of using a, a long routes or routes that have less intersections are probably hypothetically more used. So we use this as explanatory variable. Again, the same hood higher expression rate or higher uh, uh, percentage. It's also well known in several root choice models, of course, costs and so on. Uh, the picture here shows that we can give a buffer to calculate the detour with respect to the shortest pass. The point that I want to make is that I don't want to get very, very similar routes. Otherwise, they are the same from a behavioral standpoint. So we define the fastest, fastest and, the, and, the, and the shortest zone that are these zones are around this buffer. The buffer here, for, just for you, for your information, are 300 meters or 2%, if you want, of the fastest root range. Please note that this, this is explicitly found regardless of the actual trajectories that are the pathway. Because sometimes people, they chose the alternative that are not necessarily the shortest or the fastest. But these attributes are nevertheless calculated for the variational autoencoder process. Just for your information, the statistic of this variable are summarized in the table, just for information on this specific network. Other networks, the variables may be different. And the, for example, the detours, you can see here that actual chosen alternatives, and I go back to the toy network, people, they don't try to divert too much. And I think this is a behavior, this is plausible. People, they don't like to go around. They want to take as, as close as possible to the fastest, fastest route. The same with the city node percentage and the highest, take a look on the higher expressway percentage is relatively high. These also have, I need to, I need to have a, a, a disclaimer here because we removed the very short routes, less than two kilometers, for sure have less high percentage. But still, I think that at least from, a, from the data set, um, number, I, you know, numbers are okay. I don't fall off my chair from these numbers. They look, they look fine to me. The parameter estimates for these five uh, using the VAE method, we estimated two different models uh, in terms of model forms. So the utility function is linear in parameters and the VAE, again, we don't have the real roots. It goes inside the process. Every, every realization, I need to estimate the model, calculate the averages, okay? So I have here the MNL model and CNL, the cross nested model, uh, uh, I have a little bit of uh, nostalgia. So I use a little bit the, the old the, the link nested that is the alpha is calculated by the ratio between the link lengths to the root lengths. So I, in, this, in this way, I avoid additional parameters in the cross nest, okay? So that's why I don't see parameters of the cross nesting, okay? Uh, as you can see, all the parameters made has significant external authority power in terms of t-test values and p-values and so on. Uh, the neural network VAE model produces consistent coefficient estimates across different replication runs. I don't have space here to show all the replications, but I show some of the replications in the appendix in the, in the paper, you can look at it. My point is that you need to, look, to do a lot of replay. The more you do, the more you make replications, the better the, your precision becomes better. This is clear. More interesting, I guess, uh, is to compare this approach with the conventional approaches. So we, con we, we try to compare, to make a fair comparison as much as possible because in the conventional methods, there are explicit methods. So I need to generate explicit rules. So it's not exactly a fair comparison. Still, you, at least the utility function is the same specification, so it's the same. The model forms, the same. So we try to be as close as possible, okay? The results, as you can see here, both of in terms of likelihood, final likelihood, and both of terms of row bar square are significantly, you can see that the neural network VAE approach outperforms the deterministic methods uh, by, by large. Uh, also in the, 
if you want accuracy results in terms of a false positive ratio, F1 scores, uh, I don't have the formula, but I guess you, every one of you know, if you want, you can find the formulas in the paper. You can see here that the accuracy of these models are uh, much better using the same data set uh, uh, in comparison to conventional methods. Uh, I think it's also interesting to, to, to show performance results, of course, depending on the computer. All the models will run here with the same computer using GPU for, for a little bit better memory. Uh, so you can see here some indication of uh, estimation run times, including the estimation time for the VAE itself, because you have the VAE part of the machine learning model. So as you can see, VAE takes time, but uh, uh, not, a, not a big deal. I'm talking about here a very big network, 5,000, 4,000 in, in, the, in the estimation phase, 1,000 for training. Uh, so, so, you know, five, six minutes is minutes. So it's not bad at all in terms of the choice set time and the overall VAE time. So it's 37, around 40 minutes to estimate the full model, okay? Please note that the link penalty itself, because you need to replicate, what is the link penalty? You, you need to successively, successively run shortest pass. So you need to run a lot of times in order to get the choice set. So also takes time. In a big network like this, takes time. Not a huge amount of time, but takes time. Uh, another interesting point, and I want to see you for, for, those, for, for those of you that have some experience using a more complex model form such as CrossNest. The CrossNest, from explicit point of view, takes a long, much longer time in comparison to the CrossNest of the VAE. Why? This is a nice result. The VAE choice set used because the considered choice set is a reduced in the reduced space. You have le much, much less alphas if you want to calculate. However, the link nest structure in this specific model, we have 625 link nests. So it takes a long time to calculate the alpha parameters that have finished. So that's why the model estimation time for the VAE in the CNL is shorter than the CNL conventional case. For it is clear to everyone that MNL is, of course, shorter much shorter because you don't need to calculate any similarity term. But again, have the drawbacks of the MNL. This topic is already well discussed in previous papers and talks and so on. I don't need to discuss this. So over all in all, the computational time, of course, is more, but it's not a huge amount of time more. I'm talking about here a real size network. So it's computationally tractable. And moreover, I can uh, include these in equilibrium models, for example because it does not take a huge amount of time. Uh, before I summarize, I want to discuss some points uh, in an attempt to uh, show how this can be used in other methods. So let's talk a little bit about this trade-off. So the VAE method, like many other data-driven machine learning models, involves a trade-off between prediction accuracy, what I mean reproduction of the observations, and the generalizability, so the, the, the possibility to generalize this to non observed samples, or more specifically, the ability to generate alternatives at diverse levels. That they mentioned that I mentioned in the toy network. How can you generate alternatives that you, you have not seen? So, this is a difficulty, and it's also difficult in prediction in machine learning models. You, you can very well predict if you are inside. The distribution. If you extrapolate, you have always a problem with machine learning models. So, in general, for a larger and more diverse input data set, and this is the key here, if the data set is large and diverse, we, we can, we are going to be able to generate uh, this uh, or to create a distribution. Okay. Uh, the motivation then of this approach is to take advantages of the large and diverse, in, the, in our case, GPS trajectory data sets, or in any other house or survey that you have other distributions for destination choice models, parking choice models. You can use this in other approaches as well that you don't know exactly what are the distributions of the chosen alternatives. And generally they are large. Okay? 
Since our data set includes observations with different trip lengths, origin, destination, and so on, as in many root choice models, because we combine alternatives, short OD pairs, long OD pairs, and so on, uh, we expect that the learn probability distributions includes variation in the attribute lengths. There are short ones, big ones, even after normalizing them. So we want to see if this feature of root choice models can be are reproducible also in other models that I mentioned, our destination or path. Okay. Uh, uh, one minute about the hyperparameters, which is clearly a long and time consuming task. First of all, there are already in the machine learning world, data science world, they have already several, in, if you want, automatic methods to tune, to tune the hyperparameters. What I want to say here is that still they are key to find a good model. Uh, I'm showing you a very nice results. I'm not showing you the time it took until you find these nice results. So I need to be honest here to you and say that still it is an ongoing process. We still need, I'm, I, I would like very much to come up with kind of a, you know, maybe the simple word is a cookbook. How, to, how can you use this in a hyperparameter? But there are already, let me, let me finalize this point that a, the hyperparameter in this case, there is a point that is, should be mentioned. Specifically the variance that I mentioned. It, 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 is, it is in a way resembles or indicates our belief, the model's belief on the dispersion of the observed alternatives. Because if I tune it to be very precise, I don't have these additional variables. If I tune it too large, it took a long time to converge. So that's what the trade of that I'm talking now. Uh, we have this discussion in the paper, but to be honest, we need to do more work to, to, have, to, to have more, in, I, I guess, more insights on this hyperparameter tuning that are clearly key to the success or to have a good model. Okay? So let me summarize uh, what, I, what I've been talking now. Um, this proposed VAE method falls into the category of data-driven machine learning methods. So unlike conventional rule-based choice set generation methods, the size of the data set matters to the data-driven methods. So we started, like I mentioned, that we were motivated by the idea that chosen alternatives must belong to a consideration set. The VAE method explicitly considers maximizing the likelihood of including them in the choice set and inferring the underlying generation process. Underlying, meaning that this is a way to obviate this generation. In the root choice modeling application, in the test, in the case study that I mentioned, the VA model is trained with a fairly large observation data set. And the VAE implicitly generated the alternatives by inferring them, like I mentioned before, instead of explicitly searching for roots in the root network as in conventional methods. So this is based on the assumption that the network information has already been embedded in the data set itself. And the VAE model could infer the intrinsic relations between the attribute values and the network structures. The simulation experiments that we did showed that the proposal method could reproduce the predefined true values, and the model estimated in the, in the case has better performance in terms of good interfit and prediction performance. So some ideas for future research. Uh, again, let's go back to the case that if you have all the rules, if I have the consideration, we still can have a lot of network information in the data set. We need to make good use of the network information, network combined with the data set. Apart from the embedded network information that I have just mentioned, if we provide the model with additional network information, we can improve our model estimates. So what I'm trying to say that is already, we found out extensions already of this VAE method. It is called conditional VAE. So it, this can be used to adapt this method for other choice modeling methods, problems that I mentioned, uh, uh, like destination, like parking, and so on. Uh, like I mentioned, discussed briefly now, some guidelines on the data set, like coverage of the observations and hyperparameter values, which we still, this is still 
a, a topic to be further studied. Uh, that's more or less it. Thank you. Uh, uh, this last slide here, you can see the link to the GitHub. The code is available for you. You can play with it. And if you want to get details on the code, I, I will ask you to turn to Rui. He is going to be glad to help you if the code has some problems. I have run myself, it works. So, so if, I, if I could work, if I could run this, I'm sure that you can do this as well. So thank you again. I hope there are some questions that I can answer. I see here some questions. Uh, there is one question here, anonymous attendee, uh, just for clarification, the input and output of the variation out encoded are attributes. Yes. Based on the outputs, how do we ensure the output attributes correspond to the real path? Again, and this is, uh, this, uh, I, I, I like this question because this question was also, when, when I submitted the paper, uh, uh, one of the reviewers asked this question, how, Shlomo, how can you, how can you real, realize the, the, the real path? So, Honestly, I don't know the real path. I don't. I know the, only the chosen alternative. I don't know the real route. I can use, I can use the results of the VAE to, if you want, construct a choice set or a distribution of this choice set. But I will never know what are the real, real, real chosen routes. So, so, so in a way, uh, the VAE is a way to overcome this problem because ultimately. As uh, following my previous uh, uh, colleague, Professor Fosgerau uh, said, what we want is to have a good model that can replicate or, or can, and can have true and unbiased parameters. That's the point that I want to make. It is true that in several applications, we need to have an explicit choice set. So we can use this result, the distribution, to sample it, to sample it, and get the roots, like I, like I showed in the uh, toy map. So this is the first question. I hope I answered that. There is a second question by Pratik Agarwal. Would it be possible to apply the proposed approach in applications where attributes are discretized? Okay. For example, number of trusts and choice set generation of trusts and network. First of all, I'm very happy about this question. I have now a master's student. She is uh, working on public transport, root choice model using VAE. And then we do have this problem of discrete variables. We are now trying to, see, we, are, we are just trying to see if you can approximate, we always need to approximate. Like you have, the best example that comes in my mind now is when you have the relaxation of integer programming models, you know, you have integer variables. What is a relaxation? You consider first of them as um, continuous variables and then you, you, you use a realization of this. So, it is possible. The, 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 the immediate result is that the results are going to be less accurate because you, you need to have a continuous distribution to better approximate the autoencoder. And as I mentioned before, in the, in the, in the likelihood here, you have the, the limit. You are using, the, using Jensen's inequality. You don't have the true likelihood, but you have an approximation. So, as, so it is desirable to have continuous. Uh, that the questions that are in the Q&A, there are additional questions. There's another the third yes. one. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, I'll go ahead. Uh, it appears that you did not really generate the choice set, although the calibrated model does implicitly consider the underlying choice set. To apply the model, we have to find another way to generate the choice set. Yes, but as I mentioned now in the answer to the second Q and A, and Natalia, uh, we can use you can use the results of the VAE to draw uh, uh, this, this, the, this, the distributions. But we need to do this in several replications, as I shown in the in the toy network. Most of the most of the routes generated were the shorter ones. Okay, most of them because of the choice model. The choice model. You give more the beta parameter minus 0 0.1 is, is a strong value, minus 0 0.1 as opposed to the parameters here. So you know, if you have a short route, the probability to be chosen is high. Okay. So the so that is going to be basically what the VIE is going to give you. It's going to 
generate relatively short roots. Uh, uh, the idea here is to, uh, or if, if you want the orientation here, is to use this method to infer the parameters that matters for choice modeling and ultimately later for you know assignment if you want to apply this in traffic assignment and so on. So use these network parameters in traffic assignment. So you can apply this also in other methods as other implicit methods are, are being conducted right now. This is the whole point of implicit methods that you don't generate the rules. So use them, okay? I had a question uh, also. Uh, so about the hyperparameters, uh, how, how sensitive are those? Uh, I, I know you mentioned at the end that you have, yeah. you have yeah, to I, guidelines. Yes. yes, I don't have a slide here, but I have this in the paper. And I can say I, I can say to you, they are highly sensitive in particularly, uh, the, I, I can't I remember in the paper we wrote about this, in particular what I call the variance, the, the parameter that controls the variance of the distribution. Because again, like I mentioned before, if you have a very narrow distribution, you're going to generate all the time the same, so you cannot replicate the true uh, distribution of the variables in the data set, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, if I give you a simple example, suppose in the normalized values, like I show you now, the detours you have 1.1, 1.1, 1.01, 1.1, 1 .1, and then one variable you have 1.5, okay? So if I don't, I want to get this also 1.5, you understand? So I need to have, a hyperparameter large variance. But when I have a large variance, I'm going to, I'm going to generate now 1.5, 1.4, 1.8, and so on. So, so you need to find a match, if you want, of this hyperparameter to the true distribution by iteratively running. We use, a, there are already several Python routines that helps you to find the best hyperparameter to me. Okay? There's a lot of mm, development in the computer science field trying to, you know, uh, also, if you want, uh, automatize this hyperparameter to me. To be honest, we did a lot of manual work, okay? okay. We still have a few minutes for questions from the audience, but I'll take the time to ask my question. So you focused a lot in your talk about the fastest and shortest path but I do have a question for you in terms if you consider, let's say, bicycle travel or walking. We're not always the fastest and the path and the um, shortest path is chosen because of safety concerns. A lot of times, bicyclists we take a little bit longer route because it's safer or more convenient. Uh, would your approach still be valid, or you will have to tweak it yes. a little bit? Yeah. Okay. Again. Uh... Nice question. I like, uh, I, as, I, as I see in the uh, Fosgera presentation, and also I have a, a paper some years ago on bicycle route choice, clearly the attributes of bicycle route choices are different than car route choice, the attributes. So what I'm trying to say is that from a, to, to use, for example, this approach, we need to start by the definition of, if you want candidate variables for this method, what I did not mention to you, Natalia, is that we built this paper on a previous paper that I mentioned in part C. We have done a lot of work there to find several candidate variables. I think in the part C paper, we have around 10 or 12, I don't remember now the number, but much more than five. We came up with these results after trying different variables. It is true that in bicycle route choice, for sure, for example, I remember in the paper that I worked, again, using the Tel Aviv data, and I guess you are going to agree with me. Uh, uh, for example, the percentage of the route that you use a, a bikeway uh, from a safety perspective, uh, using a car, uh, you know, local street as opposed to uh, busy streets and so on. So the candidate, what I'm trying to say to you is the candidate variables are different. So this comes the modeler perspective. What I'm trying to say to you, Natalia, is that I, I, I came up with these variables we can try different variables as well. Uh, the variable set need to be um, uh, uh, suitable to the problem that you want to make. Once you have the variable set, variables, the list of variables that you think, or the, as a model, yeah, hypothesize that are explaining the phenomenon, then you can use the VAE. Okay? So it's the same here. The VAE did not, did not tell to me use root detour. No. I 
use the root tool and VAE just give me the vector of this value. Okay. But if if I use, for example, the same variables in bicycle root choice, I'm uh, expecting that my results are going to be very poor. If I don't use, for example, information about uh, uh, how do you call this bicycle lanes, uh, about bikeways, about uh, uh, calm routes, and so on. So you need to find proper variables. I know I don't know. I can think about working shades. I see papers that use shade, slope, and so on. So there are other variables for sure that are relevant to the problem that you mentioned right now. Okay. By the way, in public transport, as the question that there was in the QA, number of transfers, for example. Uh, you don't have this problem in, in car with choice, but you do have this problem in public transport with choice. So it's a different. You need to adapt the variable set, the variable set to the problem in question. It is true that in our case, I enjoy from the fact that all the variables that you see that you saw, they are continuous. They can be approximated as continuous travel time, uh, you know, and travel route lengths, and so on. But uh, maybe also in the bicycle, also walking, maybe you, you you may have some discrete variables. And I worried about personal variables. We can do two tricks. Here. One person, like you do in several models, you can use interaction variables, multiply them to the root choice. I have done this in the past have good area at the expense that you include correlation, okay? You multiply uh, gender zero, one, no to the travel time. So, so you can transform this as a continuous, okay? Second option is again, to use more advanced models to include these personal variables that I mentioned, okay? Because this Thank model, you. for example, is estimated without personal variables. Thank you. We have two more questions that I really would like you to answer. The first one. Uh, I um, didn't see. I'm oh, sorry. Reed, uh, you mentioned about the application of the calibrated model to traffic assignment. For traffic assignment, we will need the choice set, right? And then the second, how can we predict with traffic assignment? That was the first question. Okay. Again, traffic assignment. Let's talk a little bit about traffic assignment. As you know, there are several different traffic assignment models. You can think about deterministic, stochastic, user activity, dynamic, and so on. It is true that path-based assignment, for sure, you need paths, you need routes. This is clear. But you can think about this method as in other implicit method. For example, in Flotterod and Berler, they show how to, they use the, their implicit method in assignment without generating routes. Okay? That's, that's the point of using implicit methods. Okay? So it, it, it not necessarily I need to have roots. It is true. If I want to make a path-based assignment, I need to have roots. So it comes back to the previous question that I can, again, uh, uh, use the VAE approach to generate or to draw roots, okay? And then run the model. Thank you. And last questions. Uh, from Pratik, Pratik um, modern routing engines like Google Maps generate Pareto optimal choice sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, li I like this question as well. Very nice question because um, I, I, I really, uh, I really think like is like like what is implied here that you could use this additional information on the on the choice set as a as a kind of a proxy to the routes that are considered by people. Uh, um, we can use these, uh, you mentioned specifically transfer patterns. We have other ideas. We can use this threshold approach. We have, we have different ideas on how to use this additional information because this information is available. So, so this is one of the methods. Uh, I, I have some concerns if there are Pareto optimal uh, choice sets, but, but, uh, but this is a different discussion. I will be glad to discuss this may, maybe later with Pratik. Thank you so much. I will um, let Joseph conclude the seminar. All right. Yeah, thanks for uh, this uh, wonderful talk uh, and uh, the lively discussion. Uh, so uh, uh, this, is the, this is the last uh, of our summer uh, webinar series. Um, and uh, we will uh, uh, be having our um, uh, subcommittee meeting at TRB in uh, January. So I look forward to uh, attendees uh, joining us then. Uh, but uh, thanks again uh, to uh, Professor Becker. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, uh, have a very nice day for everybody. Take care. Thank Bye. you all. Thank you all for inviting me again. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye.